A study out of the University of Durham recently found that people have an easier time inferring what happened in the past rather than what will happen in the future. It wouldn't have been hard to predict this result, would it? But this is not the study that I want to talk about today. Instead, I have a very thought-provoking prediction that says global civilization is about to dramatically change. This study builds on an idea going back to the ecologist and system analyst Crawford Holling, which he popularized in his book Panarchy. He said that all types of complex systems, including human civilizations, go through a cycle of four phases. The first is a phase of exploration in which complexity rapidly increases because resources are abundant, for example, energy. Then there is a phase of conservation in which the system settles on a status quo that can last for a long time. However, the longer the system remains there, the more efficient it becomes at using resources and the less resilient it becomes to disturbances. This quasi-stable phase is then inevitably followed by a breakdown, which is called the release. After that, that's either the end of the system, which means it'll forever remain at low complexity, or it'll manage to reconfigure and start another cycle. The new paper claims that global civilization is currently in the breakdown phase and nearing a reconfiguration. So it's basically party, settle down, midlife crisis, and then either therapy or eternal stagnation. Crawford Holling drew his insights from biological systems such as forests, but argued that the cycle stems from the nature of complexity itself. It's because ultimately, whatever we do, everything from Amazon deliveries to antibiotic resistance is a reorganization of matter, energy and information. Though Albert would like to point out that matter really is just a type of energy. This complexity cycle has previously been used to explain the rise and fall of earlier civilizations, such as the Roman Empire. The new study now is an attempt to apply this system's thinking to the current state of the world, the industrial phase of human society. The author says that there are multiple lines of evidence that were currently in the breakdown phase. One line of evidence is the repeated smaller and larger financial crises and the increasingly larger fluctuations in GDP in the recovery phase. Then there are the multiple planetary boundaries for resources that we are depleting, the pollution we are causing and the mounting evidence for the beginning of a biosystem collapse. Other lines of evidence are the rapid increase in the adoption of electric vehicles and renewable energy and the spread of artificial intelligence that is changing human work in many professions with a robot revolution underway. I'm just waiting for the day AI replaces my job of telling you AIs are replacing jobs. The author argues that we're currently at crossroads. Soon it'll become apparent whether we can reconfigure our organizing system, as he calls it, to one that can deal with the higher complexity we'd need to enter a new cycle. He writes that the success of the emerging new life cycle requires an organizing system premised on highly networked and decentralized models of localized ownership and creation, and that we need to adopt dematerialized post-scarcity worldviews that he calls an emerging post-materialist paradigm. I don't know about you, but I don't want my pension savings to dematerialize, so I'm not so sure about this. I also don't buy the entire decentralization idea because what we see with AI is exactly the opposite. There are but a few companies about to become so powerful they'll make the Roman Empire look like a lemonade stand. But well, I'm just some YouTuber and this study doesn't come from anyone, but from Nafis Ahmed a British investigative journalist with a PhD in international relations. He's previously correctly predicted numerous other world events, such as the 2008 financial crash and the escalation of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, according to his own website. So maybe not the most reliable source. Let's have a look at this supposed prediction of the 2008 financial crisis. It comes from a 2006 article in which Ahmed wrote, the source also said that leading US financial analysts privately believe that a collapse of the global banking system is imminent by 2008. 
The same anonymous source also said that global oil production most likely peaked in 2004. It's now 2024 and global oil production still hasn't peaked. I wouldn't call that a prediction for an economic crisis. That's an uncommented quote from someone who claims to have talked to someone who believes that there might be a crisis coming. And if you write sufficiently many articles of this sort, it'd be surprising if there was not occasionally a correct sentence in them. So, you know, I think the gentleman is slightly overstating his case. Then again, who isn't guilty of self-advertisement? I don't mean to criticize him. No, really. I'm just telling you this as context so you know how seriously to take this prediction. Basically, not too seriously. But I do think it's worth thinking about nevertheless, because what good is a civilization breakdown if we don't properly complain about it? This is the last episode of our science news in 2024. Tomorrow, I'll be back with a different shirt paper. Until then, I wish you all a good start into the new year. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.